Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house on this second Sunday of Advent. Glad you're here for this time of worship and celebration. We have songs of Christmas. Lisa? Stand as we begin our worship today with What Child Is This? Emmanuel, Emmanuel. seated. And the Gretkin family has our Advent lighting ceremony. In many churches, the four weeks before Christmas are marked using an Advent wreath, a circular wreath of evergreen branches that symbolizes the eternity of God. The wreath features four candles representing hope, peace, joy, and love. One candle is lit each week of Advent as we await Jesus' coming. A fifth candle, the Christ candle, is placed in the middle of the wreath and lit on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day to celebrate Jesus' birth. Last week, we lit the candle of hope and reflected on the wonder of the star as a sign from God announcing the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. This week, we light the candle of peace and reflect on the wonder of the precious name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. This 
Isaiah 9, 6 proclaims, A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Seconds. Let us join together in the congregational prayer, which is before you. Let us pray. God of wonder and light, we are in awe at the way you brought us, your son, into the world. We thank you for sending your light in the form of an infant, a child. We thank you that now we may live certain beyond a doubt that a light will shine in our lives and in the troubled world which no amount of darkness can overcome. Teach us to seek your light and not to flee it. Loosen the grip which darkness has upon us that our deepest yearnings may yet be realized as we walk in communion with our Lord in the light of his love. In Jesus' name we pray. his disciples wanted to know how to pray, Jesus said, pray like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do I have any young disciples this morning? No young disciples? Well, you're going to get a story anyway. Okay. Do you get excited about Christmas? <laughs> the kids are supposed to go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you get excited about Christmas? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you bet. Well, you know, the Bible story today, the, the scripture for this morning, uh, talks about after... Mary was told by the angel that she was going to have a baby. She goes to see her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant, six months pregnant. And when Mary arrives at Elizabeth's home, Elizabeth greets her, and Elizabeth's baby jumps in her wound. Sticks that foot out, I guess, you know, and pushes in her abdomen. The baby leaped when Mary bearing her child, who will be Jesus, enters the house. That baby who was excited was, we know, is John the Baptist after he's born. And so it's John who's excited when Jesus comes into the picture, so the Christ comes into the picture for him. That baby is excited. Well, we're excited about Christmas as, our, as we count down. So I'm going to say, what excites you most about Christmas? And I, and, I, and I lose control then, you know, so. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so once I regain control, I say, well, you know, Christmas, 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 we, we're all excited about Christmas. And it's Jesus' birthday, so let's sing happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. 
Happy birthday to you. Good job, you guys. <laughs> I missed what I missed, huh? This one's treats. Oh, treats. Oh, they're, they're in the desk drawer in my office, Wes. <laughs> if you would stand and sing to a maid engaged to Joseph. So the scripture for this Lord's Day is from Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 39 through 45. <clears throat> the angel has made his announcement to Mary that she will bear a child. And Luke picks up. Soon afterwards, Mary set out and hurried away to a town in the uplands of Judea. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby stirred in her womb. Then Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed in a loud voice, God's blessing is on you above all women, and his blessing is on the fruit of your womb. 
Who am I that the mother of my Lord should visit me? I tell you, when your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Happy is she who has faith that the Lord's promise to her would be fulfilled. The word of God for the people of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. I think almost every church has an annual Christmas program. We've all seen many of them, especially if we've had children who grew up in the Sunday school, grandchildren. We've been to numerous Christmas programs. Here's a hilarious story about a Christmas program that went awry. Pastor Paul had a great scheme to illustrate the baby Jesus coming down from heaven. Pastor Paul asked Fred to help. In preparation, he carefully rigged a baby doll to an invisible fishing line, stringing it through hooks in the ceiling and across to Fred's fishing pole out in the wings. The baby doll was to be the baby Jesus. And as the sermon progressed, Pastor Paul would come to the words, and Jesus came down from heaven that night and into the manger of Bethlehem. Well, that was Fred's cue to lower the baby Jesus into the manger waiting down on the floor below. Simple enough, you think? The cue came, and the floating baby hovered above the manger, lowering precariously and swinging ever so slightly, but a good four or five feet above, above the crib, the descent came to a halt, and baby Jesus hung suspended for ever so long above the manger. Pastor Paul repeated the cue, hoping Fred would let out a little more line, but to no avail. When the good pastor could not know what was, oh, the, what the good pastor could not know was that Fred had come to the end of his fishing line. So there hung the baby Jesus, floating above the manger, his intended destination. Finally, realizing what had happened, Pastor Paul decided to take matters in his own hand. He walks over, grabs the baby Jesus, dangling, and pulls the baby down toward the crib. And so, he pulls Fred from the wings. Fred, who's embarrassed beyond relief, rushes right back out of sight, and the baby Jesus goes back up into the air. It would have been a sight to behold, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thankfully, there's no flying baby in the original Christmas story. However, there is a leaping one. And I read that to you from the scripture for the morning. So after the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and makes the announcement that she would bear a son, she excitedly and scared, we're sure, goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth, well, Elizabeth had married a man, Zechariah, who was a priest at the temple. They were advanced in years, had no children, and the angel Gabriel came to Elizabeth six months before he came to Mary and announced that Elizabeth would bear a son, who we would know as John the Baptist. And John, like the prophet Elijah, would fulfill Malachi's prophecy that a special messenger would come to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We know Elizabeth and Zechariah's son. He's John the Baptist. And this interesting thing happens when Mary enters Zechariah's home and greets Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who is in the sixth or seventh month of pregnancy, uh, hears Mary's greeting, and the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, Elizabeth ex ex exclaims, you know, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. The baby leaped. 
not as dramatic, perhaps, as the baby flu, but certainly more instructive. I think, first of all, here we see the excitement of Christmas. The baby leaped. A story appeared in Christianity Today magazine some time ago entitled Sharon's Christmas Prayer. Now Sharon was five years old and a very self-assured little girl, sure of the facts, recited them with slow solemnity, convinced every word was a revelation. And so she tells the story. They were so poor they had only peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to eat. And they went a long way from home without getting lost. And the lady rode a donkey and the man walked and the baby was inside the lady. They had to stay in a stable with an ox and an ass. <laughs> but the three rich men found them because a star lighted the roof. Shepherds came and you could pet the sheep but not feed them. Then the baby was born. And do you know who he was? Her eyes get bigger. The baby was God. And she jumped in the air and whirled around and dove into the sofa, buried her head in the cushions. Which is the only proper response to God's good news of the incarnation. Is to jump in the air and whirl around and dive into the sofa in excitement. If you've ever been around a five-year-old, you know exactly what she was doing. So Christmas is an exciting time. A cartoon in the New Yorker magazine a couple of years back showed God sitting majestically on a heavenly throne with stars twinkling all around. The planet Earth is visible in the distance and the Almighty is looking at the Earth and says, don't you make me have to come down there. But coming down is exactly what God did. The God of all creation came into our world. The Christmas story is an exciting story. No wonder the baby leaped. The second thing we see in this story of Mary and Elizabeth is the uniqueness of Jesus. The baby leaped. Why? Because even in the womb, John was the one whose coming would pave the way for the Messiah. He was aware that he was in the presence of the Eternal One, even before he was born. There's a story told about a Native American chief who was very proud. One day as he walked through his village boasting, I am truly great. There is no one greater than me. A wise old woman came up to the chief and said, I know one who is truly great. And the great chief was surprised and then angry. Who? What? Who could this be? There is no one greater than me. The wise old woman said, come to my house tomorrow when the sun is at the highest point in the sky and I will introduce you to this great one. And the chief said, very well. I will be there and we shall see who is the greatest. The chief went home and slept very soundly to gain his strength for the next day. And in the morning he prepared himself carefully and put on his finest clothing. As he did, he reminded himself of all the, thing, of all the great things he could do. There is no one greater than me, he repeated to himself as he walked to the old woman's house. When he reached the house, he called out, Old woman, I am here. It is time. Where is this other chief? Come in, come in, the woman yelled. And when the chief entered the old woman's house, he saw the old woman sitting against the wall with a baby crawling on the floor beside her. The chief looked around and there was no one else there. Where is this great chieftain you told me about yesterday, he says. And the old woman motioned toward the baby. This is the great one I told you about. And the chief was not amused. He yelled angrily at the old woman and shook his finger at her. What do you mean? Don't try to trick me. This is just a baby. At that loud yelling, the baby was frightened and... and 
by the angry voice and began to cry. And the chief became flustered. He didn't mean to make the baby cry. He forgot about his anger, got down on his hands and knees, pulled out an eagle and a hawk feather from his, from his hair and brushed the baby's cheeks with them. He pulled off his medicine bags and held them under the baby's nose. He put his necklace and jingled it next to the baby's ears and gradually the baby stopped crying and began to listen and to watch. The old woman smiled and said, you see, even you, the great chief, had to stop talking to take care of the baby. In any home, in any village, the baby is truly great because even the greatest and most powerful chief like you must become the baby's servant. This is how the Creator planned it. The Creator did not make you great so that you could boast about your greatness. The Creator made you great so that you could help others who are not as strong as you. And from that day on, no one ever heard the chief boast again about how great he was. You see, the most amazing claim that Christians make is that God came into the world in the form of a tiny baby. It's also the most appealing claim that Christians make. God could have overwhelmed us with God's power and majesty, but instead God came to earth in the person of a helpless baby. No one would make up such a claim. It's fantastic and yet true. The baby leaped because of the uniqueness of Jesus. And finally, the baby leaped because the plan of God had been fulfilled. We cannot separate Christmas from the entire Christ event. The coming of Christ is part of a far greater drama. God was at work through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, redeeming the world to himself, a work that continues to this day. Think back to an ugly time in our own U.S. history. During those heightened days of the struggle for racial integration in the South, black civil rights workers, freedom riders they were called, would travel on buses from city to city challenging segregationist laws and attempting to register black voters. Sometimes they were greeted with violence, often they were arrested. In one town, the bus was halted by the police and those freedom riders on the bus were booked and jailed. And while they were there, the jailers did everything possible to make them miserable, to break their spirits. They tried to deprive them of sleep with noise and light during the night. They intentionally oversalted their food to make it distasteful. They gradually took away their mattresses one by one, hoping to create conflict over the remaining mattresses among those in the cell. Eventually, the strategies seemed to be taking hold. Morale in the jail cells began to sag, and one of the jailed leaders, looking around one day at his dispirited fellow prisoners, began to softly sing a spiritual. Slowly, the others joined in until the whole group was singing at the top of their voices, and the puzzled jailers felt the entire cell block vibrating with the sounds of a joyful gospel song. When they went to see what was happening, the prisoners triumphantly pushed the remaining mattresses through the cell bars saying, you can take our mattresses, but you can't take our souls. It was the hymn, the singers, who were, it was the hymn singers who were in jail, but it was the jailers who were guilty. It was the prisoners who were suffering, but the jailers who were defeated. It was the prisoners who were in a position of weakness, but it was the broken and bigoted world of the jailers that was perishing. You see, friends, you cannot stop God. Once God begins moving, the best you can do is get out of the way. God was at work in the manger of Bethlehem. God was at work redeeming the world to himself. No wonder the baby leaped. Christmas is an exciting time. 
God has come into the world. God's plan for the world is being fulfilled. It's a time for leaping for joy. A time to get excited about the coming of Christmas. The Emmanuel, God with us. May it be so. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we give you thanks for the message of, of Christmas, the coming of Jesus. Even as Elizabeth's baby leaped in her womb at the sight and sound of Mary coming to her house, enable us to be excited at the coming of Jesus to our house. For you send him again and again, year after year. Help us to be open and receptive to his coming again this year. That in new ways he might fill our hearts with hope and joy. We thank you, God, for this time of worship, for our gathering together, for our fellowship. We thank you for our anticipation of Christmas. It's a good time. Continue to prompt us in our preparations for the coming of Christ once again. So we pray this day for those known to us to have need and pray for Deb that you will be with her. Pray for Bonnie and her family on the death of her sister. Pray for Dean that you'll be with him. For all others who need you in helping and healing ways, we pray. We remember all who sorrow. And we lift them up to you this day, Lord. We pray your continued gracious strength be given in the days ahead. We pray for our military men and women. Nicholas, who's stationed far away from home, as well as countless others. Lord, be with them during this holiday season. We pray for our nation. We pray, O oh God, that the spirit of Christmas might overcome the divisions and the rancor that we see in politics in our, in our, in our land. That at least for a while, both sides of the aisle may put down their feuding and rejoice in the goodness that there is in our land because you have blessed it. And so God, we pray, be with us this day and each day. Provide us with daily strength. Guide our steps, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And I invite you to stand as we sing the doxology as our gifts and offerings are brought forward. Forget for me, forgetful me at the time of the announcements. I forgot to say, look in your bulletin. All those things listed are for your attention. And especially to say thank you to the Klaus family for the floral arrangements from the service yesterday. They're beautiful and we're glad to have them in our sanctuary this morning. Thank you. Uh, you may be seated. I have too many things going on. <laughs> As
as is our particular custom. On the first Sunday of each month, we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so, this day we come to worship together. Different people, different lives, different histories. And yet, we are all children of the same parent, created lovingly by the God of all life. Different people, different lives, different histories, and yet we all have one teacher, Jesus, who is the living word that God spoke. Different people, different lives, different histories, yet one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Let us be open to the Spirit of God, which is at work in us. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent and grant, most merciful Father, for Jesus' sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and purposeful life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to the Father and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to the Father and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Each of you got a little communion cup as you came in. Is there anyone who needs needs one? If you peel back the cellophane over the wafer and reveal the bread. body of Christ, take and eat. And peel back the second layer to open the juice. The blood of Christ, take and drink. Let us pray. Holy God, we are thankful that you came into the world through your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Remembering his sacrifice for us on the cross, we give ourselves to you as a living, and, as a living sacrifice by his Spirit. In this act of Holy Communion, we declare our faith in Jesus who died, Christ Jesus who is risen, and the Lord Jesus who will come again. We ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice and make, for, make them to be for us the body and blood of Christ. May the Holy Spirit make us one in Christ and one in mission in Christ's name to all the world. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
so I invite you to stand for our closing song. There's a song in the air. of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Go in peace.